learning outcome after studying this module you shall be able to know biological evidences and types of biological evidences blood source composition and nature of blood evidence red blood cells importance of blood and red blood urine composition and importance of urine chemical analysis of urine saliva composition and importance of saliva salivary glands semen composition and importance of semen introduction forensic biology is the application of biological analysis methods particularly serological methods to legal investigations serology involves the investigation of bodily fluids particularly the blood semen saliva all of which are commonly found at crime scene there are numerous bodily fluid that may be found at crime scene or on victims all of which have the potential to be analyzed and used in the identification and incrimination of the perpetrator the examination of such substance can not only provide clues for the identity of the offender but also helps in investigation develop a detailed picture of the sequence and events which has occurred the presence of certain bodily fluids can be excellent indicator of what has occurred for example the presence of semen may suggest a recent sexual encounter whether consensual or otherwise perhaps more obviously blood at a crime scene is often indicative of some form of physical struggle assault or even murder the analysis of bodily fluid may also determine the presence of quantities of certain substance in the body such as alcohol or toxin bodily fluids can be divided into two categories excreted fluids and secreted fluid excreted fluids that may be found at a crime scene include feces vomit bile and skin oil secreted fluid includes blood plasma semen saliva female ejaculate and urine let us now understand the biological evidences which are generally found in crime scene with the help of visuals and graphics when a potential bodily fluid is discovered at a crime scene actions may be required to visualize the stain some biological samples are difficult to see with the naked eye and require particular light or chemical additions to reveal their presence presumptive test may be conducted to give some indication as to the identity of the substance though these tests are by no means conclusive and further analysis will be essential the sample must be then collected and stored appropriately so as to preserve its integrity as best as possible wet samples will often be swabbed with the swab then being placed in a vial or other air tight container individual samples should obviously all be stored separately to prevent contamination all biological samples are generally dried or frozen during transport and storage if the samples are to be dried they should be left to dry by air without the addition of heat as heat can be damaging to such specimens these extensive measures are taken to not only protect the samples for analysis but also protect the staff handling the samples from biohazards such as infection from a biological sample the sample will then be transported to a laboratory so that the analysis can be conducted the primary goal of this analysis will be establish 
exactly what the sample is though the answer may seem obvious from the appearance of the sample conclusive test should always be conducted specific test will be discussed in more detail the substance should also be subjected to species specific test as the biological sample may belong to another animal rather than a human after the completion of such confirmatory test dna analysis may be conducted to attempt to identify the secretor of the sample a biological sample may not always contain sufficient dna to obtain a dna profile individuals may be known as secretors or non secretors secretors present aspects of their blood's protein in other bodily fluids whereas non secretors will not have sufficient levels of protein in their bodily fluid to establish a match between two samples fortunately the percentage of the population who are non secretors is comparatively small in the forensic community serology and dna analysis are closely related in fact in many laboratories they are included within the same unit collectively titled forensic biology in the forensic laboratory serology analysis refers to the screening of evidence for body fluids while dna analysis refers to the efforts to individualize body fluids to a specific person in most cases body fluid identification is performed evidentiary items before dna analysis is attempted depending on the qualification of laboratory person analyst can be trained to perform either serology or dna analysis or can be trained in both discipline while serology procedures have been employed for most of the 20th century and the techniques have essentially remained unchanged dna has emerged in the forensic within the last two decades and its applications and technology are continuously developing the real challenge in evidence screening is determining which items of evidence should be processed and the most effective way in which the process them in general probative samples are those in which a transfer of body fluids and therefore dna has occurred generally a suspect's body fluid on a complainant's body or clothing or a complainant's body fluid present on clothing or items belonging to a suspect are the object that hold the most evidentiary or probative value first one is the blood it is the most common types of bodily fluid found at crime scene particularly scene of violent crimes though the appearance of blood is often quite distinct chemical tests are essential to confirm its identity initially presumptive tests are used at the scene which will merely confirm that the substance in question is most likely blood though the species is not established at this point presumptive tests are usually based on the color change or chemiluminescence of a particular reagent when it comes into the contact with the hemoglobin in the blood luminol is frequently used in initially identifying blood stains particularly if the perpetrator has attempted to clean up the blood thus rendering it invisible to the naked eye the presence of blood 
causes chemiluminescence, the emission of light as a result of a particular chemical reaction, in this case of a blue-green color. However, luminol has been known to react with other substances including bleach, saliva and various animal and vegetable proteins. The Castelmeyer or phenolphthalein test is another presumptive blood test. The stain in question is collected with a cotton swab before drops of ethanol and phenolphthalein indicator are added. If no color change occurs, peroxidase is then added. This detects the presence of enzyme peroxidase in the blood, producing a pink coloring if present. Leukomelachite green or LMG is similar to the Castelmeyer test, replacing the phenolphthalein with leukomelachite green. When added to the substance, a green color will be produced if blood is present. Hemastics are plastic strips originally used as a form of urine test. In the presence of blood, the strip will take on a green color. These strips are particularly beneficial in that they are small and easily taken to the crime scene, allowing them to act as simple instant presumptive blood test. It is then necessary to confirm that the blood is of human origin as animal blood may be completely irrelevant to the crime under investigation. The precipitin test is used to determine the species of the blood's origin. Blood contains different proteins which vary between species, meaning that the protein in the blood of one animal may not be accepted by the blood of another species. If a foreign protein is detected, antibodies are produced to protect the body from harm. Serum for this precipitin test is commonly obtained from rabbits as they have produced antibodies to destroy a small amount of blood injected to them. This produced anti-human serum is added to the suspected blood stain. If the blood is of human origin, the serum will precipitate its protein, which can be visually observed. Samples of wet blood stain will usually be collected using a swab, later sealed in an airtight container. Dried blood stains may be scrapped onto a sheet of a clean paper or into an appropriate bag. Any blood stained item that are collected should be stored separately from one another to avoid contamination and damage to these stains. Blood typing is one form of categorizing blood known as the ABO blood system. A, B, O and AB are the primary blood groups based on the presence of certain antigens on the surface of blood cells. Before DNA testing, blood groups were used as a method of eliminating or incriminating suspects, though obviously not exclusively. Though the use of blood groups cannot specifically identify the individuals from whom the blood originates, from. They can narrow down the field of search and eliminate particular groups. Recent antigens are also known commonly and studied within the blood typing system. An individual whose cells do possess the Rh antigens is known as Rh positive. Likewise, those without the antigens are known as Rh negative. Most people about 85% do possess Rh antigens. The frequency of certain genes within different blood groups may vary between different races or groups of people, potentially narrowing the field of suspect. Further, for example, 
Rhesus antigen V is present in around 40% of West African Negroes, but only 0.5% of questions. The blood type itself may at least suggest the most likely race of the suspect or victim. Type A blood is most common among Europeans, while type B is found commonly among Africans and Asians. Similarly, type AB is most common amongst those of Japanese origin and the O type is frequently seen within the Latin American and Native American groups. Blood is basically consists of water, cells, enzymes, proteins and other inorganic substances. Now let us learn nature of blood. The freshness of a blood sample is used by inspecting serum. Since it clots quite a few minutes later exposure to the air, a centrifuge can be used to separate the clotted material from the serum portion. In addition, serum contains antibodies, proteins floating in blood fluid, which have significant forensic effects. Next, we will start with the red blood cells. Red blood cells are the most prevalent blood cells in human body. It delivers through blood oxygen from the lungs to the other body's tissue. Next, we will learn importance of blood. Wet blood is more vital than dried blood as the forensic scientist can accomplish more tests to increase insight to the happening of the crime. Alcohol and drug contain can be resolved from the wet blood only. Blood started to dry subsequently after three to five minutes of exposure to air and alterations of color from dark red near brown and black. Blood can be characterized into pulse, drops, seamers or crust. Next we will learn about urine. Urine is occasionally encountered in forensic cases, often in the form of dried stains. Urine is liquid human waste containing water, salts and a variety of small molecules. Urine is an aqueous solution of with 95% water, urea 9.3 gram per liter, chloride 1.87 gram per liter, Sodium 1.17 gram per liter, potassium 0.750 gram per liter, creatinine 0.67 gram per liter, and other dissolved ions in organic and organic compounds. Next is chemical analysis of urine. Urine is principally water and contains inorganic salts and organic compounds together with proteins, hormones and a broad variety of metabolites dependent on what is bring together into the body. Next is importance of urine. Urine can be examined to contribute facts about the crime as well as its victim or the suspect. Urine can be used to test for alcohol, drugs and poisons. Next we have saliva. Saliva is the clear liquid produced in the mouth for various purposes, primarily to act as lubrication for food and provide the enzyme amylase to begin the breakdown of this food. Composed of water, enzymes, various electrolytes, mucus and epithelial cells from the inside of the chicks, it is ideal for DNA profiling as it contains the same proteins as blood and urine. Saliva can also be analyzed to detect the presence of drugs and toxins. Collecting a saliva sample from a suspect has become the most common method of collection when carrying out DNA testing and comparison as it is simpler and far less intrusive than obtaining a blood sample. A cotton swab is rubbed along the inside of the suspect's chick.
collecting a sample of saliva and epithelial cells. Saliva will also be of great significance if found at crime scene, such as on the victim of a sexual assault, on the cigarette and or around the rim of a glass or a bottle. Due to the high level of amylase present in saliva, testing for this enzyme is a presumptive test for saliva. However, this enzyme is also found in the lower levels in the other bodily fluids. Various chromatography and spectroscopy methods are frequently used in the extensive analysis of such samples. Next we have composition of saliva. Human saliva is 99.5% water while the other 0.5% consists of electrolytes, mucus, glycoproteins, enzymes and antibacterial compounds. Saliva is a combination of secretions by three salivary glands known to be paroid, the subliguinal and submaxillary. The given image shows the three salivary glands of a human being. Next is importance of saliva. Salivary test has been used for a wide range of forensic studies and saliva is frequently present at crime scene beside with other bodily fluids. Samples can be acquired from drinking glasses, cigarette butts, envelopes and other sources and then used to identify blood group substances or salivary genetic proteins. Next we have semen. Commonly found at the scene of sexual assault or other sexually motivated crime. Semen plays a crucial role in identifying the perpetrator and linking him to the scene. Semen is the fluid expelled during male ejaculation designed to carry and support spermatozoa, the sperm cells. In a single ejaculate of semen, it is estimated that there are on an average of a quarter of 250 million sperm cells, making semen ideal for DNA profiling. In some cases, the fluid may be difficult to see with naked eye. As previously mentioned, Certain alternative light sources can often visualize latent evidences, particularly traces of biological fluids. Ultraviolet light causes semen to fluoresce, indicating its location, while not damaging the evidence itself. The acid phosphatase test is one of the most common method used to detect the presence of semen. Due to the high levels of enzyme in human semen. However, acid phosphatase is present elsewhere in the body, meaning the test may react positively with other bodily fluids. Therefore, this should only be used as presumptive test for semen. Prostate specific antigen, also known as SPA or P30, is a glycoprotein produced in the prostate gland. This is equally useful in detecting the presence of semen, though is once again only a presumptive test as PSA is also found in urine. The microscopic detection of sperm is a more confirmatory method of discovery. Using microscopic equipment, it is often possible to view the sperm cells, providing their presence. However, the older a biological evidence is, the further decomposition may have progressed. Therefore, fresh and well-preserved samples are preferred. Semen consists of two components, spermatozoa and seminal fluid. Spermatozoa are the male generative cells and a normal human ejaculate can contain from several million upward to 80 million spermatozoa cells per ml. Next, we will learn about the composition of semen. During ejaculation, the sperm passes through ejaculatory duct and combines with the liquids from the seminal vesicles. 
the prostate and the bulbourethral gland to form the semen. Next is importance of semen. Semen evidence is helpful to positively detect suspects and sperm recognition can be an essential factor in confirming sexual assault in cases of rape. Next is physical evidences. When collecting physical evidence, it is preferable that the entire object to be submitted to the laboratory with question stain intact. If removal or transport of an item is not possible, the stain may be cut out or when necessary scrapped from the item. Small stain should be collected on a water damped cotton tipped applicator that must be air dried prior to the packaging. Due to the sensitive nature of DNA testing, care must be taken not to contaminate the sample by the individual collecting the sample. This includes wearing gloves, masks and refrain from sneezing or coughing on the sample. Physical evidences for serological and DNA analysis should be packed in paper, paper bags, envelopes or cardboard boxes as appropriate to the sample type. For example, blood scrubbing should be enclosed in folded paper packets which are capable of containing the evidences without loss. Envelopes, paper bags and pill boxes do not provide a suitable enclosure because scrubbing can leak out at seams or openings. Tape is also an unsuitable method to retrain scrubbings. Plastic bags and airtight containers are unacceptable because they create an environment that can be damaging to biological evidences. Because heat, humidity and sunlight all have destructive effects, evidence package should always be maintained in a cool dry location following collection. Items from separate sources that is victim and suspect clothing or those suspected to have stain from different donors should always be packed separately. These should not be handled excessively, especially in stained areas. All evidence items must be completely dried without heat or sunlight before packaging for delivery. Items with wet stain should be spread out on a clear paper to dry because if they are folded, wet multiple stain can be created from one stain. Air drying should be accomplished in a manner which prevents cross contamination of stain and loss of other evidence types like hair, fibers or other trace evidences. Proper drying is particularly important to minimize the degradation of DNA. Sexual Assault Evidences Collection Kits The GBI Sexual Assault Evidence Collection Kit is prepared commercially. These kits have been adapted to comply with the statewide medical examination protocol developed for sexual assault victims. The kit is sufficient to collect educate sample from the victim's body to perform semen or male DNA testing. The instruction sheet provided in each kit is explicit and complete for proper evidence collection. In educate collection and preservation of these samples can eliminate the potential for suspect identification. No tubes are provided to obtain a known blood sample from the victim during the medical examination. In 2003, these kits were produced to include envelopes and swabs to collect buccal swabs as known as reference sample. If blood samples are taken, they should not be placed inside the sexual assault kit itself and should be packaged separately. Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Biological evidences determines the origin of question, nature of species of blood and to show the particular source of biological evidence. Blood conformation is of significance in crime scenes like homicide, 
sexual assault, stealing, robbery, hit and run accidents and game law destructions. The freshness of a blood sample is used by inspecting serum as it clots after some minutes exposure to the air. RBC delivers through blood oxygen from the lungs to the body tissues. Wet blood is more important than dried blood. Alcohol and drug content can be determined from wet blood only. Urine is an aqueous solution of with 95% water, urea 9.3 gram per liter, chloride 1.87 gram per liter, sodium 1.17 gram per liter, potassium 0.750 gram per liter, keratin 0.67 gram per liter and other dissolved ions in organic and organic compounds. Urine could be used to test for alcohol, drugs and poisons. Saliva is a watery substance and located in the mouth of organism. Saliva is a mixture of secretions by the three salivary glands, the parotroid, the subluginal and submaxillary. Saliva samples can be obtained from drinking glasses, cigarette butts, envelopes and other sources and then used to detect blood group substance or salivary genetic proteins. Semen evidence is used to positively identify suspects. Sperm detection can be an important factor in confirming sexual assault in cases of rape.